Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is uh, Dean Tenney, a.k.a. the Series 7 Guru. Uh, I'm coming to you from my studio in fabulous Las Vegas, and we have found another courageous, brave test taker named Lisa. She is, uh, you know, doing her tutoring session, and she's giving you permission uh, to ride along with her. You get to take a free ride on 75 Kaplan questions. Uh, this is a custom quiz from the Kaplan Q Bank. Uh, with the Guru 10 discount code at checkout, you can get a Kaplan Q Bank for about 58 bucks. I think definitely worth the investment. Uh, for that commercial, Kaplan allows me, gives me permission to share their content uh, with test takers like you. So uh, are you ready, Lisa? You ready to get this done? I'm ready. All right. So here we go. Uh, Anical Corporation issued a hundred million dollars of hundred par value per preferred stock a number of years ago. The stock pays quarterly dividends of $1.25. Recent issues of comparable preferred stock pay a dividend of 10%. One could expect the market price of anical preferred stock to be closest to. Mm. Yeah. Right. To bring a lot of different ways to attack. This is a judgment question. Yeah. Um, okay. So the stock pays quarterly dividends. So just to get that out of the way, so it would be five dollars. I love it. You're on the exact um, right track. So, so five dollars means right five percent based on or five dollars based on par that it pays five percent. And now the brand new ones pay 10%. Ooh. So now I'm going to the new ones pay 5% or 10%. So really it's gonna be um oh the market price. One can expect that the market price of the preferred stock will be closest to um okay so hold on so the dividend yield oh gosh no, maybe it's I'm five getting myself... yeah it's okay. okay you're on the right track you're on the right track. you know good good news you know on these judgment questions like this uh you're on the right track to know that uh it's going to be less than par certainly right and... yeah and 10% of par, 10% of par would mean brand new ones are paying $10. $10. Right? So that's what a brand new one is paying. And yours only pays five. And if the brand new ones are paying 10, right? Oh, and it says yep. current yield. Uh, that we're saying that, uh, well, gee, we could have the expectation that people would want to buy this at a price that would approximate a 10% current yield. Right. So, you know, current yield is what it pays you divided by what it costs you. So here's the new one. And we're saying this old one would have to be priced such that people would be willing to consider buying it, even though it only pays five dollars. So these are those kind of word, word problems where, you know, you have to kind of figure that out. So now we're saying what we're asking for you. Is remember current yield is what an investment pays you divided by what it costs you. Okay. And so if this was going to pay something close to 10%, like the new one, what would that price be closest to? 50. There you go. Now that's a judgment question. That's a lot of work for one point. So we're hoping, okay. that, you know, at some point you actually, uh, you know, uh, are going to assign ones like this to the universe and just say, you know what? I'm just going to guess B and and move on. Uh, but, you know, that is a uh, main point is to make sure you know that when interest rates go up, fixed income investments go down. There's the rationale on how to do that. Yeah. Good okay. job. All right. Number and, two. Number oh, two. Okay. Yeah. A All customer right. sells short 500XYZ at 80 in a margin account. Uh, before regular wave settlement, the stock <laughs> falls to $60. The minimum main and margin requirement is, I'm kind of laughing because, you know, 
uh, you know, Kaplan jerks are, you know, bigger jerks than the real jerks. And, you know, uh, <laughs> this is kind of, a, I think, a gotcha question in uh, this regard. So, you know, oh, well, so. Okay. So I'm taking, okay, so this is a customer sells short at 80 in a margin account. So this is an already existing margin account. That's right. Before reg before regular settlement, um, if the stock falls to 60, the minimum margin, so this is a short, um, yeah. which is 30%. Excellent, excellent. So I love it. So let's put that, you know, what I always think is when you get something like that, you know, you just want to put it somewhere as a holding to say, okay, I got it. it's 30%. Remember what it's 30% of? Um, of the short market value. That's right. Oh man. So I guess Kaplan isn't as big a jerk. You're, you're, you're right on track to getting this right. So 500 shares and the stock is now 60. Right. So the market value is going to be that. So it's um, 30,000 times 30%. So it's 9,000. Excellent, excellent, excellent. You even be me to the math, right? Uh, by the way, I'm not being facetious. <laughs> I'm terrible at arithmetic. So I was getting ready to grab my calculator and figure out what 60 times 500 is. You beat me to it, 30%. Yes. Excellent. And as we said, we want to be able to do practical application uh, because, you know, there's no interpretation of a math, math answer where you just simply get it right or we get it wrong. So, right. All right. Uh, ooh, balance sheet. Uh, which of the following balance sheets entries may be affected when a company pays the dividend? Pays the dividend. Uh, okay, I get a little bit. Um, I should know this right off the top of my head. No, well, um, don't really, I mean, to be honest with you, don't beat yourself up. I think balance sheet questions are, uh, you know, not as uh, straightforward as they could be. But yeah, let's let's. I don't think you should know this off the top of your head, but. If you do, wonderful. Is working capital one of them? Well, let's see. This is where it's kind of a trick. So let's go over that because working capital is testable. Working capital okay. is company's current assets minus its current liabilities. And when a company declares okay. a dividend, it becomes a current liability. Now, here they didn't say the company declared the dividend. They said they paid the dividend. And so that would have no effect on your working capital. So at least if you pay your bills today, it doesn't affect your working capital because you have less of an asset called cash, but you also have less of a liability. So when they actually pay the dividend, it has no effect on working capital because the current assets go down by the exact same amount as the current liability. So declare a dividend, working capital decreases, pay the dividend, no effect. So that means we can eliminate anything that has a four in it. And so that means yes. it's not B, it's not D. And that means we have to take three, which is it does affect uh, total liabilities. Because right when you pay your bills, you no longer have that liability. And when you pay right. your bills, you have less of total assets because you got less cash, right? So okay. I think on all these balance sheet questions, the way to do it is think about your own personal balance sheet. And if you pay a liability, that uh, does affect your total liabilities. You have less of them. It does affect your, your total assets because you have less cash. It doesn't affect the equity. Your net worth hasn't changed. Your net worth is the same. So it is two right. and three, two and three. Another tough one, another tough one. Closed in company shares may be Okay. Traded in the secondary market, including the exchanges and over the counter markets, sold in the over the counter primary market only, redeemed by the closed in investment company or traded by invest or institutional investors. Um, 
my God, close, open and close and drive me nuts. Um, all right, so. Is one, <clears throat> excuse me, one, one of them. It, it certainly is. And that's very, very testable to know yep. that closed end funds <clears throat> trade in the secondary market. So I'm going to put a little TQ for those of you who are riding along with us. Man, make sure you know that. It's very testable to contrast a closed end fund with an open end fund. So you need Roman numeral one. Uh, by the way, if you take Roman numeral one, uh, you can't take Roman numeral two. Are we clear why you can't take Roman numeral two if you're taking Roman numeral one? Yeah, because it's market only. Yeah. Right. Market so only. For that test taking trick, that's called the principle of mutual exclusion. That A and D are answers that can't exist in the same universe. And you nailed it, right? You said, well, it says only. And obviously one says that's not true. Right. So, you know, the classic example I use, Lisa, of this test taking trick called principle of mutual exclusion is Socrates is a dog. Socrates is a philosopher. Well, he can't be both a dog and a philosopher. He's one or the other. Right. Uh, or maybe like convertibles. Convertibles have a coupon that's less than straight debt. Convertibles have a coupon that's higher than straight debt. It's got to be one of the two because they're, again, different things. So we can eliminate two. You need one without two. So it's going to be C. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> uh, so, you know, by the way, you know, I, I know it's probably not your intent, you know, but um, people do become better test takers, uh, you know. And then, you know, there's a little bit of emotional debt letdown. I know you're ready for it, that when you finally are done with all these tests and you pass, you're going to go, oh, my God, I don't have to study anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to want to get out you your book. You want to call. You might use a book tutoring with me for old time's sake. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry. My 66 is coming up. So after I get under this one, I'll, I'll get the 66 out of the way. Oh man, this oh is a real tough one. Which of the following best describes an intangible drilling cost? Intangible. So that's one that you can't touch. So I would say that is, I want to say it's exploratory. Well, exploratory is a type of oil and gas uh, program. An intangible oh. drilling, you, you are on the right track, right? It's a, it's not, you know, it's intangible in the regards that it's a non-capital cost of putting in the well. Uh, you know, it's not like, you know, we're actually uh, buying stuff that we're going to depreciate. And again, I think this is a legacy question. It's one of my pet peeves. Uh, in the old days, and just for you, those of you watching, I have a podcast episode on uh, legacy series seven test questions. In the old uh, version of the Series 7, there were 250 questions and easily 10 plus questions on partnerships. When they went to the SIE and top off and the regular new 7 that you're taking now, uh, none of the test prep vendors, including Kaplan, want to, you know, uh, cull their Q banks and get rid of these legacy questions. And so you do encounter, it's not just Kaplan, STC, Past Perfect, you do encounter what I call legacy questions. Well, past perfect, I think, is yeah. the worst of it. Past perfect has questions where they're making you calculate yield and maturity, even though nobody's had to do that in like 30 years, right? So, you know, I consider this to be one of those legacy questions. Uh, but it is currently uh, deductible, and that's the case that we get to do it. Because remember, that deduction is uh, important. Tax advantages in, in partnerships are important. So, uh, again, I wouldn't worry about that one. Ooh. Okay. A customer places an order to sell 500 ABC at 46 stop limit. Which of the following statements is true? Okay. I had to write my little swabs and bliss here. I, I'm glad um, you're doing that. I'm glad you're doing that. <laughs> okay. So the stop limit, so that is... 
um, above the line. Well, be careful. It's a sell stop limit. It's a sell stop that if triggered uh, becomes a you're right. So that's below. That's with the sell stop and the sell stop limit. So that is below 46. Yeah, I think you know, I think here, right? There's our line of the current market price. And you know, uh, that slop is over bliss is really uh worth some points. And remember, it doesn't matter whether it's a sell stop that turns into a market order or a sell stop that turns into a limit order. That's going to be below the current market price. So here's our sell stop. Here's our sell stop limit. And the one we're looking at, I might as well just put that there, right? Yep. Okay. So, um, so what, which is true? All right. So that's our self stop limit that is below the current market value. Um, so I guess then when I when I'm looking at this, will I be looking at it as though it's the one and the four that they're both the lower? Well, what you're looking for is again, let's just make a line now. So remember, this is uh, you're telling your broker that if this stock trades at or through 46, then yep. you want to sell, sell it, but you want 46 or more, which I think is being pretty foolish, but. Right, you're saying that if this stock trades at or through 46, but well, what we mean by at or through is it doesn't have to be 46, it could be 45.99, and that would trigger the order. And now it becomes not a live market order, it becomes a live limit order. Right. And now you want 46 or better because remember, as a seller, you want your price or more. So, all right, well, let me look at these then. So if the order will be elected at 46 or lower. You are correct. So you got Roman number one, you're halfway home. Yep, okay. So then, um, all right, so that's going to be either C or D. So that's I need correct. three or four. All right, so we've got that it's going to be elected at 46 or lower. And then um, let me just read this. The order can be executed at 46 or higher, um, or the order can be executed at 46 or lower. Um, so order can be so it's not it's not for. It's, it's not one and four. Are you telling me? I guess I'm. Well, now you're a seller, remember? So you're a seller and you wanted 46. So, as a seller, are you happy if you get your price or higher? Or are you happy if you get your price or lower? Because remember, the whole point of a limit is you're saying you only want to do business if people will do business with you at your price or better. Or better, or better. Now I see how that's reading. Okay, so the order can be executed at 46 or higher. So it's one and three. C. Excellent. Excellent. That's, by the way, now that's the reason we're doing this, by the way. The whole reason we're doing what we're doing is because of that, right? For you to practice and get better at that. Right. right. Yeah. And excellent. Excellent. So, you know, you just got to be kind of organized. Give yourself permission to take a strategic pause, right? And say, okay, so I'm a seller. So now I'm telling my broker that I want to sell, but only if I can get my price or better as a seller, my price or more. Right? As a buyer, it'd be your price or less. Right? Good job. Good. Okay. Right, that was a good one. That was a good one. Okay. 
the terminology guaranteed full faith and credit is most applicable to, well, that's kind of an interesting one. Yeah. Um, interest in principal on a U.S. government issued bond, interest in principal on a corporate bond, interest only on government issued bond, or interest in principal on a municipal revenue bond. Full faith and credit. Um, I mean, generally, when I'm thinking full faith and credit, I'm thinking of it as government. Oh, you're correct. You're why? correct. Okay. Okay. So I guess it would be because it's full faith and credit. So I would say income or interest in principal. You are so. correct, by the way. By the way, the, the, the giveaway on the question is guaranteed. You better not be using the word guaranteed unless it's a government security. Because, you know, yeah. it ain't government security. That's kind of a nasty word to be using, right? So if you're going to say yeah. the word guarantee, you better be real careful in the circumstances in which you're using that word with a customer. Excellent. A uh, hedge fund has contract with your broker dealer handle all of its clearing functions and provide all back office functions uh, while it's executing transactions through numerous other broker dealers with whom your broker dealer will have agreements. This type of account is known as uh, okay. So to handle all of its clearing functions while executing transactions. Um, okay. So um Prime brokerage account. Excellent. I wish you'd give her that list. Like, oh, is it a prime broker? Say it with confidence. It's a prime brokerage <laughs> account. You, know, you gotta even if you miss it. You want to sound like you, you know. You know, I always like, I got like it. that. You know, somebody has a wrong answer, but boy, they sure say it makes you question myself. I go, man, I thought I knew it, but maybe that's right. You know, uh, it's a confidence. <laughs> uh, a numbered account is uh, testable. A numbered account. If you get a numbered account on your test. Uh, you need to know that there's a letter on file attesting to ownership that we can shield the uh, numbered account from every the broker dealer except the rep and the branch manager. And a numbered account uh, operationally works just like any other account. Wasn't the answer here, but I would certainly know that. Uh, types of accounts, very testable customer accounts. A custodial account here would be an UTMA or UGMA. It's UTMA they test on one minor, one custodian, kids tax ID number, uh, no margin. And then be able to distinguish between a joint account, tenants with rights or survivorship, with tenants in common, very target rich about it, you know, the various types of accounts and how they work. XYZ Corporation has set Friday, January 23rd as the record date for its next quarterly dividend distribution. To receive the dividend, oh my goodness, Kaplan are such jerks. <laughs> A customer long in XYZ February 40 call must issue exercise instructions uh, when, right? On or before. So this one's kind of interesting because it's combining, you know, now Kaplan does this more often, Lisa, than the actual test. Kaplan is combining more than one test thing, separate test things into one combined question, right? So they're asking you to do, you know, one combined thing and to know all these various little items of minutia to get the question right. Okay, so what is it really asking me? To receive the dividend, a customer long 1XYZ February 40 call must exercise instructions on or before. Um, all right, so, but it's saying that it set the record date, so... Got the declaration, the X date, the record date, the payable date. So we got the record date as Friday, January 22nd. So that's, um, so I have to go back. That's correct. A couple of days here. So, but that's a Friday. 
So then I've got a Thursday and a Wednesday. So Wednesday, the 21st. Wow, that was excellent, man. You beat me before I even could get it all set up. <laughs> if I were in charge, Lisa, I would have given you two or three points for that one. Uh, you know, every question's only worth one point, but uh, right on, right? You got to be on there, you got to buy it the day before the X, right? Yeah, excellent. Yep. That was excellent. Uh, an investor placed $5,000 into a 200%. Uh, leveraged ETX or leveraged index ETF uh, exchange rate fund. During the first period, the index against which the ETF was measured rose by 10%. In the second period, the same index fell by 20%. What is the value of the leveraged ETF at the beginning of the third period? Okay, let's see here. So, five thousand times two hundred. Oh, five thousand times two hundred percent. Okay. So I have um, ten thousand that it raised the first time. I already had five thousand. So I'm not entirely sure I'm doing this right. <laughs> uh, it sounds like it. I like um, as your tutor, as your tutor, I do like when you talk out loud because I can hear what you're thinking and you are going about it the right way uh, based on what I'm hearing you say. Right. So I took the 5,000 times the 200%, um, got 10,000. So that gives me 15,000 um, for that first period and then rose okay, let's, by let's, 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 let's slow on slow down so this is okay. 20 percent or 2x so you're on the right track so let's just table the 200 percent. we started with five thousand. Okay. so yeah. the index went up 10 so 200 percent of 10 two times that is 20 percent, right so that means that the market went up It'll increase or decrease two times the performance. So 5,000 times 20% is what we're going to get. So 5,000 times 20. Oh. Right? Are we clear where the 20 is coming from? That's the 200 that we're multiplying by, right? We're saying two times 10% is going to be $1,000. Are you following me on the math? Let me just put the math up here. Not yet. Okay. Not so yet. So we started with 5,000. And we're saying that this is going to go up twice, 200% of whatever the referenced index does. So, you know, 200% means two, two, two times, right? So if it's 200% of 10, right? If we take the 10% times 200%, that's actually 20%. And so that we were getting 20% is two times 10. So that means it went up a total of a thousand. And so now we're sitting at 6,000. That's our first adjustment, right? Okay, and now it says in the second period, what they're trying to get at is what they're hoping you're gonna say is it hasn't changed because it's a wash. It goes up and goes down by the same amount, but no. Because now if it goes down, it says 20%. So remember, it goes down 20%, but it's twice. That's going to be now 40%, right? So we're going to take our 6,000, and we're going to times that by 40%. How am I getting the 40%? That's the 2 times the 20%. That's what 2x means. So when we times okay. that by 40%, that means it went down $2,400. Right. So now we say, okay, well, if we started, if we started at 6,000 and now it went down $2,400, that means 3,600. Yeah. So let's just review this again. So 
what we're starting with here is not the 200%. We're, we're just strategic pause. We say, okay, this thing is going to move twice or 200%, whatever the market does. So that's our first thing. During the first period, they measure up by 10%. So a couple ways on the 10, I could just, I just doubled it, but you could take the 10% on your calculator times the 200%. If you do that on your calculator, you get 20%. But you could just say, well, twice is going to be 20%. So then what we did was we said, okay, well, whoop. there's there's our math right there. So we're going to take our 20% and we get 1,000. So now we got six. Then it goes down by 20, but remember, it moves twice as fast. So that's 40%. Boom. All right. Uh, I think that, you know, you might have to do something like that. I might have to do something like that. Okay. I wasn't even close in my thinking, though. Well, you I, were on the right I, track. You knew, you said this, and that's where, right, you knew you had to deal with that. But we're, yeah. what we need to deal with is this and this, and then that's where this comes into play. Is Got it. Okay. So, all right. Let's get our next one here. Uh, before affecting an initial penny stock transaction for a new customer, the registered rep must. Okay, so let me read these a second. Must confirm whether the person is an established customer, obtain a signed risk disclosure document from the customer, obtained a signed suitability statement from the customer, and determine suitability based on financial condition, investment experience, and investment objectives. And this is for a new customer. Um, so we're not confirming that the person is yeah, established. I'll tell you your skills. Uh, you know, as your tutor, I, I want, I'm going to take credit for how greatly your your test taking skills have expanded over the time of a relationship. Thanks. In terms of reading questions, you know, dealing with information that isn't pertinent versus what it is, you're absolutely correct. That is not part of the question. Thank you. So I definitely know um, that it's two. That's and I'm, I'm okay. So um, that leaves me with three different options here. So it's, um, well, no, it doesn't, because B is not not part of it. So it leaves me with um, two different A and C. So now it's oh no, it's C. Oh man, your test taking skills are getting so much better. It's incredible. <laughs> I don't like it's C. <laughs> I said that was confidence. <laughs> now, now listen, Lisa. Just remember, we got to learn the information. So we, yeah. we we don't want to rely upon uh, being clever on our test taking skills to pass. We want to know the information, right. but it does help. I mean, unfortunately, or fortunately, if you're a good test taker, there is an advantage to being a better test taker. I can't prove it, but, you know, anecdotally, you know, it's worth some points. So uh, excellent. What's the following uh, registers the securities uh, and packages of the program for a limited partnership? of the following registers the securities and packages of the program for a limited partnership. Okay, so the syndicator, the limited partners, general partner, property manager. <laughs> uh, the limited Yeah, this is a kind of a, a different one. The, the, it's actually called the syndicator. The syndicator is the one who does it. The general partner manages the program, uh, you know, data. Right. But the syndicators, it's called a syndicator, you know, sponsor, you know, whoever does it. So, yeah, kind of a stupid one, you know, okay. I think. I think. I doubt you're going to get asked about syndicators. You will get asked about general partners who manage the the investment and limited partners who provide the capital and uh, you know general partners have unlimited liability and 
you can't get in or out without the general partner's permission. So when I say it's a stupid question, I just mean I don't think it really adds to anything in terms of uh, the actual test. Yeah. in the over-the-counter market except. Okay, so except. Um, a? It's not A. All uh, debt securities trade over-the-counter. This was a bad miss because remember, open-end companies are continually offering new shares to the public. You're doing business directly with that mutual fund company. And so it's open end funds because they don't trade in the secondary market. Government agency okay. securities okay. trade in the secondary market. NASDAQ securities trade in the secondary market. ADRs trade in the secondary market. But open end funds trade in the primary market. Primary market. Yep. I'm making note of that. Yeah. Yeah. Please, please do. Um, you know, you're doing business directly with the mutual fund, the open end fund. The IRS requires a municipal bondholder to use straight line amortization for the purpose of determining the annual. Let me do my little. Yeah, I like that. That's a good way to go about it. Okay, so, so we're saying a straight line amortization. So that is um, use straight line amortization. It's going to be for the premium. There you go. And, I love it. You got a 50 50. And it's going to be to decrease. Ah, uh, man, the stuff I'm, I'm telling you, the stuff you are now solid on, you are really solid. That's fantastic. I call that not decibel decretion. So Dean calls straight line amortization upward accretion and amortization downward decretion, decrete going the other direction. Not a test term. Excellent. Uh, remember, you might actually have to do practical application of that as well on the exam. So. For a retired okay. person, which of the following investments would provide the greatest protection uh, against inflation? Ooh, man, I wish tips were there. Yeah, I like uh, it. I, like it. I love what you're doing, by the way. I call that projecting the right answer. And you're saying, you know <laughs> what? If a tip were available, I would take it. <laughs> you would be correct to take it. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, a retired person, which of the following would provide the greatest protection against inflation? Oh my gosh, I'm wanting to say variable annuity, but it's a yeah, I like that. You know, you're correct, right? Because I don't like that choice either. But here we can use the Sesame Street trick. One of these things yep. is not like the other, right? So B, C, and D are fixed income investment vehicles, whereas a variable yep. annuity is not because of that separate account. By the way, I'm sure a compliance department would also frown on this question because I'm not so sure that a variable annuity is a suitable uh, investment recommendation for a retired person. But hey, given the answer set, you know that's our best answer. All right. An investor opens a new margin account and sells short 100 shares of COD at 87.25. With Reg T at 50%, what is the investor's required deposit? Okay, so 100 times 87.25. Love it. You're on the right track. So that's um, eight thousand seven twenty-five. Um, um, really divided by two. 
so four thousand three sixty two fifty. Ooh, man, perfect. <laughs> A uh, married couple has several individual and joint accounts with your firm. One spouse calls you and requests that you make a transfer of funds between the accounts. This would not present a problem if. Would not present a problem if. Okay. Let me read this back in here. Um, so they have a joint account and one, one spouse calls and requests you two funds between accounts. Okay, so the caller is the signatory on both accounts. The caller is the signatory on the account receiving the funds. You have the caller send the request in writing. You verify the identity of the caller. It's A. Uh, excellent. A U.S. exchange listed foreign currency option, U.S. exchange listed foreign currency option premiums are quoted in which of the following? Um, U.S. exchange listed foreign currency option premiums. U.S. dollars? Yeah, excellent, right? That's the whole point is that so you can trade them here, right? <laughs> So that was, uh, you know, kind of a, almost a trick. Uh, level yeah. one NASDAQ uh, provides uh, service subscribers with all the following, except. Information, except volume information, last sale information, bid and ask quotes, and the inside market. Um, mm, 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 mm. okay, um, <sighs> I hate this. Um, A? It's not A, it's actually C, right? Level two okay. shows you the market makers. So level two That's shows it. you the market makers. Level three is what market makers have. So what level one does show you is the highest bid and the lowest ask. That's choice D. You should definitely know the inside market is the highest bid and the lowest ask. It shows you the last sale, who cares? Shows you the volume, who cares? But we should know that C would be a level two NASDAQ data feed as we show you down here, right? So. Okay. All right. Well, you know, you're going to miss some. You haven't missed one in a while. So that's, you know, that's okay. In order for an investment company to qualify as a regulated investment company and thereby, thereby avoid triple taxation, it must act as a conduit or pipeline and distribute a minimum of its net investment income. At least what portion of the net investment income must be distributed? 90%. Boom. Well, you know, aim and shoot, point, click on those ones. You, you just got to be able to perform, right? Excellent. A stock mutual fund wishes to advertise itself as diversified. To be able to do so, the fund must invest its total assets such that Um, mutual fund wishes to advertise itself as diversified. To be able to do so, the fund must invest total assets. I'm going to say B. You are correct. 75, <laughs> 5, 10. All right, there you go. Excellent. I almost said that just, but I, I needed to read them. Well, listen, you notice that when you give me a letter, I'm picking it quickly. And that's what yep. you should be doing. You shouldn't be using your own brain to outsmart yourself. So, you know, your <laughs> first answer is your best answer, right? 
A yeah. resident of the state acquires a stock pursuant to Rule 147, interstate offering, is prohibited from selling stock to a non-resident of that state for how many months? Hmm. I believe it's either six or 12. Um, 47. Um, six. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, with XYZ, when XYZ stock trades at 40, and an XYZ October 35 call trades at five, which of the following is true? Uh, these are the worst. These are the worst for me. Let's do some intrinsic value. Okay. Um, great. 40. Okay, so which is true? Okay, so I know uh, current market value um, that's above the strike price for a call is in the money. Okay, what is this? This is a call. Okay, so the trade, so that current market value is 40. The strike price is 35. Um, and it trades at five. Oh, um, I mean, from first look at this, I would say it's in the money, but I am worried about it is, that. It is, it is in the money, but that's not okay. one of your choices. <laughs> you know, so you are absolutely right. It's <laughs> in the money. It has in terms of God. So, okay. Yeah. Not one of your choices, though. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. So I see what you're saying. Let's see. The that's what I wanted it to be. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's see. So, so remember, what are the two components of an option premium? What are the two components? You are correct to tell me that this premium, this option contract has intrinsic value. It's a 35 call stock is at 40. And we said there's two components to a premium. It's the intrinsic value and the time value. So what is the intrinsic value of a 35 call with a stock at 40. Um, none. It's actually, well, the intrinsic value is five. So intrinsic value five plus something equals five. What is five plus something that equals five? Zero. Yeah, so, so it like, has no oh, time. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Okay, the time. All right. Okay. Now you wouldn't you wouldn't see that in the real world, but again, I'm not upset with your institutor because you were you were exactly on the right track. You were trying to compare that relationship. You were absolutely right about the relationship, Lisa. You said uh, it has in terms of value, it's in the money, and then I responded by saying that's true, but that isn't a choice, <laughs> right? So and so, so you, you, I had eliminated. A and B. Yeah, you, it, rightfully so, rightfully so. So you, based on that, you should have been and correctly been able to eliminate it. So you had a 50-50, right? Yeah, and then, right. so remember, now you have to remember that intrinsic value plus time value equals the premium. So not bad, not bad. Like I say, just practice. Uh, both of the Securities Act of 33 and 34 address fraud in the securities industry. Regarding the anti-fraud provisions outlined in these acts, which of the following statements is true? All right, so I've got exempt securities like those issued by municipalities are exempt from the provisions. Exempt issuers like the federal government are exempt from those provisions. 
no securities or transactions are exempt from the anti-fraud provisions of these acts and exempt transactions like those offered under reg a are exempt c well i'm sorry c cat yes there you go i'm going to make sure because yeah, that's very testable no one and nothing is exempt from anti-fraud provisions a customer buys an August 50 put at one and sells an August 65 put at 10 when XYZ is at 58. Who cares? And, you know, it doesn't really matter right. where stocks that when we do the trade. What matters is now 52. If XYZ is at 52, the customer has. Okay. So if it's at 52, then it's um, all right, I'm just writing this down a minute, putting them on top of each other. Yeah, I love, I love a process. August 50 put at one and sells when XYZ August 65 put at 10. Okay, uh, at, um, which is at 58. And then at expiration, it's a 52. And the 52 is what I need to worry about. Yeah, that's right. Right? Okay. Right. So um, just so I can put this into perspective for myself here, this is a put spread. You are correct. This is a put spread. Is it a debit or credit and spread? There is more money um, in than out. So it's a credit. You are correct. You want the contracts to exercise or expire? Right. And so, oh, um, so I want the send. So I want credit expire narrow. You are correct. Uh, when you collect money, which we've done here, the max gain yes. is what you've collected nine. That is the net premium. And the loss. Yes equals the difference in the strikes. So nine plus something equals 15. That something is six. So you can lose uh, six points here or $600. Uh, by the way, uh, we now know that B and D are out because 52 is within the range. And so that means it can't be six is the point. All right, so are we going to use cow or push for our break even? Cow or push okay. for our break? We're going to use push. We're going to use push because put, subtract put, from subtract the minus. The really. 65 minus 9. What is 65 minus 9? 56. Right on. And is this bullish or bearish, this spread? Um, okay, so I use bulls. So because you're longer, lower strike, so that is um, bull, bullish. You're correct. It's bullish. So that means you want it above your break even. You want it above your break even at 56. Because you're a bull in a, oh, sorry, bull. Sorry, bull. It's 52. And 52 is four points in the wrong direction. Yep. And so, so that means you're going to lose four points, which in option speak is? A. By the way, Lisa, as your tutor, you're very impressed. Very impressed that you were able to do all of the eight menu items all of the eight things that you're held accountable for in a spread. And I like that you just didn't try and jump in and get the 56 and the 52. You know, when you want to have a process and we said, okay, it's a spread. We stacked our legs. We determined credit expire narrow. We got our gain. We got our loss. We got our break even, bullish or bearish. Now we go to the question, whatever they want to know, you got the answer. And then by the way, yeah. a lot easier than what this looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those, oh boy, I can't, yeah. An investor, which of the following products may not, may not receive uh, dividends? May not receive dividends. Um, 
Okay, so I would say shares of common stock, even though they pay dividends, they're at the bottom of the liquidation. Hmm. Um, but it doesn't say liquidation on that. I probably don't, don't want even to get extra in stuff into the question. Don't use your own brain against yourself. Okay. So and preferred stock, they could, but it says may not. It says may not. That's right. That's um, a, you're, you're getting really good at uh, RTFQ. Read the full question. Right. So this means under no right. circumstances, one of these is never going to pay you a dividend. Okay, so oil and gas limited partnership interest. I believe that's the one. You are correct, right? Partnerships don't pay dividends. They have distributions, right? Yep. Uh, if a customer establishes a debit spread, the customer profits if... Ooh, okay, so that's my do. So that is debit exercise and widen. So oh, look for no. debit. So you're Go ahead. so now what are you gonna pick based on what you just told me? I am gonna pick one and three. Oh, oh debit. do debit. Do. Yeah, debit expire or I'm sorry, that uh, exercise. If yeah, if Dean doesn't exercise, he widens. That's right. I'm getting wider <laughs> all the time, sitting on my ass here. <laughs> Las Vegas. You know, as I say, to Lisa, some cultures are a sign of wealth and prosperity. You know, but uh, boy, I, we were doing our live stream last night, and I uh, I have a lot of different camera angles here in my uh, in my <laughs> studio and. I didn't find one of them, Lisa, that was flattering. <laughs> I was looking around and, the camera and I said, oh, you know. But oh no. my God. And you know, I'm just kidding on that. You had said that at one time. No, 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 no. I, I'm, I was... I'm not kidding. I listen, I have very health esteem, self-esteem, so probably too much because, you know, my my brother is talking <laughs> to day goes, you know. You, you can't be like that. I said, Chris, I don't know what to tell you. I am who I am. So I'm tired of talking to you about things you think would make me a better person. I'm, you know, I'm just not you know, that person, right? So I do as a contractor and he sent me a picture of the shower he's building. And, and I said, you, you, you know, you got the, the shower head. It's on the wall and it's got to be in the shower thing. And it's really, the cap is pretty small. And I guess pictures are deceptive. And I said, you know, my mom can't even reach that thing. So uh, you know, he's trying to assure me that it's okay. And uh, I said, you know, his name is Jason. I said, I said, well, we'll be there Saturday. If mom can't reach that, you're going to have to fix it. And I know he doesn't want it because you have to <laughs> yank the shower out of the, the thing and redo it. And anyway, like, the next picture I get is my brother in the shower. And uh, he went and grabbed my brother. My brother's cabin's like across the way. And he said, I need you to get in that shower so I can take a picture of you and show it your brother so he, he can see the scale properly because... He's ready to blow up on me. <laughs> so, uh, and, and apparently, you know, I called him. I said, hey, Jason, okay, you're you're right. That's a great place for it. My bad. And the member says, you got to be nicer to people. I go, well, listen, I'm paying like thousands of dollars. I don't think I really have to be nice. I want him to do the way, things the way I want them done. And if he doesn't do it, then I'll find somebody else who can do it. <laughs> you know? A direct right. participation program organized as a limited partnership must avoid at least two characteristics of a corporation. Which two characteristics are easiest to avoid? What are two ways in a partnership can really quickly distinguish itself with the IRS is that we're not a corporation, we don't quack like a corporation, and therefore we should not pay taxes like a corporation. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to read these a minute. Continuity of life and freely transferable interest. Centralized management and continuity of life. Continuity of life and decentralized management. And freely transferable interest and centralized management. Now, I'm going to be very impressed with you uh, if 
already very impressed with you, Lisa, how your test taking skills have grown. But remember, we have a test taking trick. And that trick is one of these things is not like the other. Um, it's not like the other. Okay, so let's see here. Continuity of life and freely transferable interest. Centralized management and continuity of life. Continuity of life and decentralized management. Freely transferable interest and centralized management. Is it A? Excellent. Right on. Partnerships do not have a continuity of life. They have a finite life, unlike corporations. And unlike corporations, partnerships do not have a freely transferable interest. Excellent. Uh, stock or bond power represents which of the following? Power to accept dividends and interest, appreciation, Potential in stocks with high EPS, limited power of appointment and substitution, limited power of attorney to vote a stock if no contest exists. A? Uh, it's not A, it's a assignment to transfer separate from the certificate. So I say, Lisa, yeah, don't send me a fully negotiable stock certificate in the mail. Uh, send me the uh, stock certificate unsigned, non-negotiable in one envelope, stock or bond power in the other. When I get it here in the office, I'll be back in business. So we can use this to, uh, for security reasons. Uh, we could use this. I say, hey, Lisa, you blew it. Uh, you know, you didn't sign it technically correct. And you say, well, send it back. I go, no, no, no. I'll send you stock or bond power, sign that technically correct, and then we're back in business. So it's assignment to transfer separate from the certificate. Okay. Uh, which of the following statements regarding exchange traded funds is true? All right, let's see here. So the SEC has classified them as mutual funds. The SEC has classified them as a type of open end fund. They have operating costs and expenses that are higher than those mutual funds. And they have operating costs and expenses that are lower than most mutual funds. Oh. Okay. So is two two one of them? Yes, it is indeed. Okay. All right. So I'm down to A and D. So I've got three and four. All right. That's what I thought. And now, um, four. Indeed. Just have more confidence. Your voice. Yeah. Just be have more confidence, right? Indeed. Absolutely. Yep. You nailed it. You nailed it. Uh, a registered rep produced a research report, uh, re reproduced, I was going to say, what are you doing doing your own research report? Reproduced a research <laughs> report prepared by an independent research analyst on his broker-dealer's letterhead with no mention of the party who prepared the report. If this literature is forwarded to a select group of clients only, the registered rep's action are or is not allowed. Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, this is sketchy <laughs> from the, from the get-go, right? I mean, wow. Uh, your client purchases 100 shares of XYZ Common at 50 and sells two 55 calls for a premium of two. The investor's maximum potential loss is... Ooh, okay, so this is a this is a covered call, right? Is it? Is it really? Is it a covered call or is well, it? I don't know. I mean, okay. you got shares, and how many contracts did you write? Oh, uh -huh. I sell two contracts. 
So one is one is covered. One is yeah, you're right. One is covered and one is not. So is it um well okay so one hundred share. I don't know not a married put because there's not a put if it's <laughs> yeah. like I'm like, oh my god, what is that? Okay, so XYZ um at fifty. Okay, so that's the dominant leg, and then I've got Whoa, 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 um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. there's no leg here. Or oh, leg. no leg here. No leg. This is somebody who bought 100 shares of stock. Yep. And then sold two calls. You were, you're, you're kind of going away from what was looking like you were getting the right answer. You said that oh. you were covered on one of those contracts. Yeah. You're not covered on the other. And so what do we call That's it right. if you're not covered on a call? What do we call an uncovered call? Uncovered call, naked call. And naked calls expose you to? Unlimited risk. Right? There's no such thing as partially naked, right? You're either naked or you're not, right? And <laughs> right? you say, well, Dean, I'm covered on 100. I go, well, that, you know, that doesn't do you any good. <laughs> Right, your customer owns 100 shares of all the stock. What's the limit downside? You may recommend. All right. So for volatile stock, um, to limit downside risk. So volatile could be long. You're correct. I love the way your brain is working here. You have uh, progressed substantially, Lisa, on just uh -huh. your process of attacking questions. So you're correct. If you want protection, you're going to have to pay some money. So you're now to a 50 50. It's either A or B. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to want protection. N normally, you're going you're gonna to buy a call. Well, remember, what are you afraid of? You're afraid of the stock going down. You're not afraid of your stock going up. Buying a call. Buy a be, yeah, that's very testable. But you got to a 50-50, right? So buying a call would protect a short stock position. Buying a put, remember, you're afraid of going down. So those puts, you're worried about the opposite market direction, which is down. So you want to hedge that works in a down market, right? So we're looking at our, whoop, and we're looking at our matrix, down. right? We need something that's going to you know, help us if the market goes down. We're worried about the opposite market correction. So that put will kick in. And then, you know, that we use that put to protect the stock position. That's called a protective put, a protective put. Okay. All right. Uh, all the following may be cited to justify a markup on a stock from a broker dealer's inventory, except. Um, okay, a markup. So, may justify a markup on a stock sold from a broker dealer's inventory, except availability, overall value of the transaction, the securities price. Or the dealer's cost. So, um, why do I feel availability? The overall value, the transaction. Securities price for the dealer's cost you may justify a market um, markup markup. The dealer's cost. Excellent. I wish you just had more confidence in your uh, your voice. I mean, you know, 
you know, maybe if you keep yeah. working your ass off like you are, I know you're working really hard. And I know you're dedicated and you're disciplined and you're organized. And I got to tell you, the improvement is is definitely uh, visible in uh, the way you're attacking questions. So the next thing we want to get to is like, damn it, it's, you know, D, right? It's just a little, a little more, you know, uh, and even if you're wrong, right? Even if you're wrong. All right. Oh, I know. <laughs> An investor purchased 100 shares of Paradigm Publishing Corporation on October 6, uh, 17, 2020. Uh, the price was $83. On April 11, 2021, the investor wrote 1 PPC November 80, call at 3. At expiration, PP stock is selling at 90, and the investor liquidates the stock in the market and closes the option at its intrinsic value. The net consequences are, wow, a lot of things going on in this question. Oh, gosh, right? Um. Ever, there's a lot of things going on. What is Dean's mantra? Uh, Fire up like the that. tea. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fire Fine. up the tea. Point. Yeah, fire it up. All right, fire oh, in the hole got our, here. Got your T fired up? Yep, I got my out, okay. my in. so there we go. So now we got to start tracking things. Is the 83 money out or money in? When you buy that stock at 83, money out or money in? Okay, if I buy it, it is out. So minus 83. So yeah, we're going to put 83 in the dollar out box and boom. And let's make it big. Boom. All right. So we write 185 call at three. Money out or money in? In. Boom. Now, one thing you might want to get, uh, you know, kind of comfortable with on a T is this idea of what we call the offset, right? That, you know, boom, boom. Okay, so it says on expiration, uh, the stock is selling at 90 and he liquidates the stock at the market price. So if he liquidates the stock at the market price of 90, is that money out or money in? Uh, money in. Right, boom. And it says that he closes out the option contract for intrinsic value. So the uh, call is an 85 call. The stock is 90. So what is the intrinsic value? Uh, five. And so it says we close it out, right? So that means we are going to do a closing purchase at five right. okay and now it says the net tax consequences are so now all we got to do uh -huh. is total up our columns we're out 88 we're in 93 and so are we a happy camper or are we an unhappy camper we're a happy camper at five yeah, how happy are we? We are happy. Uh, five hundred dollars. Now, by the way, the last thing we got two five hundred. So, the last thing we got to check is how long have we had this? So, it was October seventeenth, two thousand twenty. Uh, April eleventh, two thousand twenty-one. No problem, right? Because we've been at risk for more than a year, right? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so, do, 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 do. now we got to squeeze the trigger. <laughs> I've done this many times where I forget to actually answer the question i leave it blank and then you get marked wrong don't god knows you don't, now the right. test you can't leave it blank it won't queue it up and tell you you uh you know answer right. the question all right boom 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 one of the most important roles played by a registered rep is making suitable recommendations to their customers uh doing that requires gathering as much information about customers as possible uh which of the following factors would likely be the least important when dealing with a couple in their late 20s with two children. 
Yeah, I miss these all the time because you know it's they're so subjective. But you know, I think I might I might be able to kind of use process of elimination. I think is how I would have attacked this one. Well, okay. So current employment stability, I think that's important. I'm with you. I totally agree. Okay. So I'm getting rid of that one. I'm with you. I'm taking that. What else? It's least likely. So. Uh, um, yeah, so least likely, I mean, we've got the education goals for the children. That yeah, I think that's going to be important. Second. Yeah, I think that's important. Yeah. And then values. That, I mean, that's important, but I don't know that it's the most important. And then expected retirement age. Well, I think that's probably the answer is the retirement age. Yeah, you're correct, right? I'd probably get fired by this this couple because I'd say, come on, that's way north of where you're at right now. You got a long journey. <laughs> I'm joking. You know? <laughs> but, you know, listen, why did you worry about getting the kids to college and you know, getting a house? And I'm joking, but you know, yeah. Uh, you know, the, right. I, I always joke, the difference in tragedy and comedy is timing. And they've got a lot of timing, you know, for, to worry about retirement. Uh, a basis of bond with a 5% nominal yield Maturing in 20 years, priced at 115 is approximately. Ooh, okay. So this is 5% of the nominal yield. Um, okay, so that's 50. And then I want to say... 50 divided by 20? Well, remember here, what you know is your teeter-totter, right? So yeah. what you need to do is make your teeter-totter, boom. And let's just get a yep. teeter-totter, that's boom. And remember, oh, line represents okay. a bond at par. Uh, yep. This is a bond at 115. And we know that the nominal never changes. Yep. So we already have a partial answer here. What we what we mean is we know that this has got to be something below five. And so that means we can get rid of this. Uh, mm, now yeah. we say, okay, well, what else can we kind of do? I am held accountable to know current yield. And so I know the current yeah. yield. I know the current yield is going to be something less than five. And I should be able to do that. So now I'm going to get the current yield. I'm going to take 50 and I'm going to divide by 1,150. And let's see what the current yield is. Not what they're asking me, but it'll be helpful in terms of figuring out. Uh, boom. The basis, by the way, is yield maturity. Yeah, that's going to be 4.3%. So 4.3%. So now I'm going to put that in here. And now, based on my teeter-totter, I know that the yield to maturity Lower. has to be something less than that. Right? 3.95. Yeah, so be careful on this kind of a question. You know, Every once in a while, Lisa, well, somebody will call and give me a very hard time. Well, let's say, Dan, you told me I'm not going to have to do uh, yield of maturity. Basis is the fancy word for yield of maturity. I said, you're not. And you said, well, Dan, QID 131-2570. Ask me yield of maturity. I go, whoa, take a deep breath. Are they really asking you yield of maturity? You really have to calculate this? The answer is no. It's where is yield of maturity in relationship to the other numbers? Now, let's be clear. You certainly have to be able to calculate current yield. That is yeah. definitely, right? So that's how we would have gone about uh, solving uh, that. Okay. Teeter-totter, seesaw. Yeah. I All the that. following statements regarding dollar cost averaging are correct, except... Okay, dollar cost averaging. All right, so an employee stock purchase plan is one way to use dollar cost averaging. 
dollar cost averaging is a passive investment strategy. Dollar cost averaging is the investment of a fixed amount of money each period, and dollar cost averaging decreases the risk of loss. C? Yeah. You know, as much as we want to say that to somebody, we never say that. Very testable. What makes dollar cost averaging work? Fixed dollars invested regularly. What's the end result? Very testable. Lower average cost, the underlying shares. Three doesn't guarantee a profit. So excellent. Uh, when customers receive their account statements, they will generally not include. Okay, not okay. Trade dates of all transactions during the statement period, interest charged on debit balances in margin accounts during the statement period security positions at the end of the statement period and total cost of purchases and net proceeds made during the statement period. Net proceeds. Um, okay, so I think it's gonna include the trade date and all transactions, unless there's one that, okay. Yeah, yeah you get that on your confirmation, right? So. The trade date isn't yep. there. It's, you know, settlement might be so. That's what I was just All the say, following yep. statements regarding liquidity are correct, except. Okay, regarding liquidity. Okay, the most liquid of assets in cash. Liquid assets include. CDs and treasury bills. Liquid assets can be easily converted to cash. And it it is the inability to find unwilling buyers for an asset. Uh, Oh. All the following statements regarding liquidity are true, except. So you got to pick one. Ah, okay. Um, I think process of elimination where cash is the most liquid asset, that's true. Liquid assets yep. can easily be converted to cash, that's true. Liquid yeah, assets, including treasury bills and CDs, are liquid. That's true. So it's not liquid if you can't turn it into cash. <laughs> I was saying the inability. Yeah, 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 I yeah, just couldn't do it. All right. Okay. An investor wants part of an existing portfolio to track or move with a popular index. While comfortable knowing that the investment will rise and fall with the index, any risk beyond that needs to be avoided. Uh, which of the following would be the most suitable recommendation? Um, while comfortable knowing that the investor will rise and fall with the index, any risk beyond that needs to be avoided. Um, the index fund? Yeah, right on, right? That's the only plain vanilla product there, right? Those other ones are... Yeah. <laughs> so, right? Good job, good job. Uh, with regard to municipal bonds, an extraordinary call is commonly invoked when... Extraordinary call, okay. So an economic cycle indicates that the interest rate will sharply... will be sharply increasing. A catastrophe destroys the facility backing the revenue bond. I'm sure it's that one. It appears that the issue credit rating will be downgraded and property tax credits. Yep. Yeah, when well, you're sure, remember, on the real test, you know, practicing, go ahead and reverse the answers. That, but on the real test, just answer, because we we don't want you burning up brain cells unnecessarily, right? Because you need, yeah. you want to finish strong, so to speak. Uh, according to FINRA's Uniform Practice Code, which of the following delivery of stock certificates 
does not constitute good delivery for 540 shares. Right. So I want to look for something. Um, so nine certificates times or 60. So nine times 60. So that's 540. Okay, that's good. Um, two certificates for 50, three at 100, and seven for 20. What I'm looking for is one that's. Uh, Okay, one certificate for 300, 12 for 20, one for five, eight for five dollars. It's got to be like in a thing to get to 100, right? Like Yeah, so uh, I think the way I would have attacked this is under the Uniform Practice Code rules of good delivery, the odd yeah. lot has to be its own pile its own pot you know purpose of the rules get this going in so that means that i need to have a, a, a pile of 40 that's separate so here i look yeah. and i say okay i got to be able to make this 40 in its own separate pile so if i look here i say well here i've got uh, a pile of 40 so b is good yeah. delivery uh here i got 12 of 20 so I put two of those 20s together and that will give me my 40. Right, that odd lot has to be a separate pile. I have uh, five, three for 100 and seven for 20. So again, I can pull two 20s from that to get my 40. And then here, there's no way to make a pile of 40, right? Uh Yep, that's what I did. I actually went to that one first and I started you counting did, you it did. up. I thought, I thought you were going to get it. That's the one that's, the rest of them are makeable and breakable into 500. This is makeable. Okay. You did the makeable part, but we, you didn't do the breakable part. It's got to be makeable okay. and breakable. So that's makeable. Okay. It's makeable, but it's not breakable. Okay. And boom, you got that. that uh, the NAV of a mutual fund can be expected to decrease if. Okay. Per share for mutual fund. Okay. Decrease. The fund has more dividend distributions to shareholders. The issuers of securities in the portfolio have made dividend distributions. The securities in the portfolio have appreciated in value. And the fund has experienced the net redemption of shares um, can be expected to decrease. Okay, so dividend distributions. Um, C? Uh, not C, because that would mean the NAV go up. C is okay. in Charlie makes the NAV go up. What happens to a fund's NAV or a stock when it goes X? It goes down by the amount of the dividend, right? So the NAV is going to go down by the amount of that dividend distribution, right? When it goes oh. X, when it goes X. Okay. Now, the main thing that makes it go down is the securities and portfolio declining in value, right? But that's not one of our choices again, right? And C makes it go okay. up. Investors placing zero coupon bonds in their portfolio are most likely looking to provide Um. Okay, so not accumulation capital um not tax deferral so two and three uh two and three right oh no it's oh, a really no. bad miss that was a really bad uh miss because you know yeah. accumulation of capital 
It says most likely looking to provide. You said too, there's no current income on a zero coupon bond. Yeah. That yeah. was a really, yeah, right. really bad mess. Really, really bad mess. That's your first yeah. really bad mess. Right. So I wouldn't worry okay. about it. You should know that zero coupon bonds do not have current income, right? You have to actually pay interest on the imputed interest you're not actually receiving. Uh, but the good news, you did get number three, which is big time test fodder, that you do not have reinvestment risk in a zero. So that part you got right. Okay. Uh, Customer buys 800 shares at 70 in a new margin account. The price drops to 50. The minimum maintenance requirement is. Okay, and so this is on a long, um, long market value. That's okay. great. All right, so at 70, well, at 800 times 70. Thousand. Okay. Just be, and careful. Then... Just, just be careful here, Lisa. And it's you know, we've been at this uh coming up on uh you know an hour 45. So you gotta be careful when we're doing a lot of stuff that you just don't get tired. But is the 25% of the market value? Yeah, is yeah, that yeah. it's not 870, right? It's 25% of the market value, the current market value. And the current market value in this question is not 70. It's 50. That's right. So it's going to be 25% of 800 shares at 50. Now, the way we, we say this, Lisa, remember, is we do a mark to market. We do a mark to market. Yeah. And so 25% of 40. Ten thousand. There you go. So you know, we just again, I, I, as your tutor, I'm very, very pleased with your performance. Very pleased. Um, that being said, we we don't want to give up questions that we know you know how to do. No, <laughs> so, no. You know, we want to. No, we want to no. make sure the ones that because the ones you're solid on, you're pretty damn solid. And so it goes back to yeah. that RTFQ thing. You know, I think we're going to have by by now in test time, I think we're going to have a margin of safety. And uh, that's going to be good, right? Because I think uh, the right. improvement you're making, you're continuing to march. But, uh, you know, again, we want to make sure that uh, on things you, on the stuff you know you're pretty solid on, and we want to make sure we don't give up any of those, any of those, because, right. you know, we want to make sure we, we you know, take advantage of that. Uh, our right. JN Corporation has issued warrants where each warrant offers the holder the right to purchase the common stock for 20. The warrants are exercisable any time within the next five years. Uh, Chelsea purchases 80 warrants for $2 each. If three years after the purchase, the market price of RGN stock has risen to 25, and Chelsea sells the warrants for the intrinsic value she has realized. Wow. <laughs> My God. <laughs> See, when I get a question like this, it almost just. Well, no, no. Shut well, down. listen, Dean will say it again. Fire up the tea. The tea, right on. Oh, it looks like a, to me, it looks like to me that we're going to have to track some money in and out of here, right? All right, yeah. so let's get our tea fired up. You know what, but I guess what I'm saying, I get it, Lisa, but we just, you know, we don't want to give up. We want to say, okay, well, I got to tax somehow, somehow, yeah. some way. You know, I, I kind of joke, I'm hoping we're going to get you to a margin of safety enough where you're not going to have to, you know, guess be and assign things to the universe, but you can if you want to. So we get better right. and you get a question like this and we have a margin of safety, then you can do just that, say, I, I can have this and speak to me, I'll make it up elsewhere. But, you know, that's not quite right. where we're at right now, right? So first they tell right. me that the uh, right is to purchase the stock at 20. So she has a right to buy the stock at 20. The warrants are exposed any time. So she purchases 80 warrants for $2 a piece. So I'm going to put 160 in the dollar out box. Are you seeing how I'm getting the 160? Yes. 
right? Okay. And three years after the purchase, the stock is 25. So uh, we now have uh, 20. Now you were pretty good at this. So here's what we say. This is something that I know as your tutor, you can actually do because you've been doing it all day long, right? You're comparing yeah. the strike price of the warrants to the market price. Yeah. And so each of these warrants have intrinsic value of how much? Five, right? $2. Yeah, so, oh, wait. well, a 20, if the strike price is 20. Oh, oh, yes, I'm sorry. I Yes, okay. Right, so I just yep. put in the 20 there. And so that means each of these, each of these has an intrinsic value of five. And our friend uh, Chelsea, is her name Chelsea, I think? Yeah, Chelsea. So Chelsea has a, a warrant that is now worth five. She has 80 of them. And they're saying that we're going to close these out, you know, or offset at the intrinsic value. So again, what we're doing now is closing out. Boom, I'm going to give her that. And so I'm going to take my calculator. Five times 80. It looks like okay. that's $400. Right? And that's going to be money in. So boom. And so is uh, Chelsea happy or is Chelsea sad? happy yeah so and now i'm going to take hopefully this is one of my choices i take 400 minus or 160 and we get 240 so that means either b or c uh so now what we got to check is uh, how long was she at risk so uh a warrant uh to purchase three years after the purchase so that most certainly is a what long-term long game so again we don't want to give up too soon on a question that does look involved, right? Okay. So, you know, I, I think you were hinting, and I'm, I, I apologize if I'm wrong, that you look at a question like this and you say, I don't even know how to dig in, how to even begin. Well, so. honestly, sometimes when I see these long ones, I mean, it, it, that, it gives me anxiety, like, right away. Like, okay. you know, okay. I mean, so I'll let's now say, when we see one of these long ones, we're going to... We're going to say, woo, look at this performance opportunity. We're going to embrace it. We're going to fire up our tea. We're going to figure out some way to kind of attack, right? So, Right on. Yeah, by, by the way, I mean, as I said, as your tutor, I don't want you giving up on these because you certainly have enough knowledge base to answer this question, right? So, yeah. I mean, sometimes these look a little, you know, more complicated than they are, but you know, I know that just based on your performance earlier that you know what intrinsic value is. Now, you got to practice yeah. our mechanics, and that's part of practice of drilling and rehearsing, and that's part of today's session, right? It's just, you know, practice drilling and rehearsing, right? So, uh, boom. Right. All right, so that's our next one. If a customer wishes to open a new account but declines to provide all the financial information the member firm requests, which of the following statements is true? All right. So the member firm may open the account and make recommendations without meeting any other criteria. The member firm may open the account if it's determined by other means that the customer has the financial resources to carry the account and that trading is suitable. The member firm may not recommend any transactions unless the representative is able through the information available to make a suitable determination. And the member firm may not allow trades in the account until the requested information is received. So um, they can open the account. I'm just talking at the moment. They can open yeah, the account. No, I like you talking. I got to hear what's going on in your brain housing group. Yeah, but they can't, they're not going to make any um any recommendations 
or provide any recommendations um, unless, I guess, um, the one that says the member firm may not recommend any transactions unless the representative is able through the information available to make a suitability determination. Um, one more time, I know I got to answer or get an answer going here. Um, the member firm may open the account and make rep recommendations without meeting any other criteria. I don't think that's it. Yeah, um, right on. I think that's what you should have done, right? So, uh, you know, yeah. we're coming to, to you know, we're we're been at this coming up on two hours. But you should have been able to eliminate Roman number one right out of the gate, right? Yeah, yeah. And now by doing yeah. that, now good news, you get a freebie. You know you're taking right, right. So now you got to decide: is it two and four, or is it two and three? Right. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, so the member firm may not recommend any transactions unless the representative is able through the information available to make a suitability determination and the member firm may not trade in the account until the requested information is received. Um, it's kind of a toss up because I feel like. Well, listen, I'm, uh, I'm happy to tell you that based on your performance uh, today and the improvement, there's been a couple of these where you kind of were you know, burning up some time that isn't necessary because you're going to make it up in other questions. So you just can't be pondering this. At some point, you just got to squeeze the trigger and live with the consequences of whatever it is so you can save brain uh, energy for other questions. So it doesn't matter how much you toggle back and forth on two and four and two and three. It's one of them. So, you know, you just want to pick one. Okay, and two and three. And by the way, almost Definitely. every time you do that, you're correct. So why <laughs> why, why burn up all the brain cells? You know, don't, don't, don't outsmart yourself. Don't use right, your brain right. as a weapon against yourself, right? So, you know, right. it, it's, I guess, I guess it's a good thing that you got too much brain power, you know, be, you know, because some people aren't, don't have enough brain power to overthink and use, outsmart themselves. But some people are smart enough to outsmart themselves. <laughs> you know, that's not what you want to do. Mom and I, mom and I, mom's retired. I take care of mom. And I like watching her reality TV with her sometimes. And she's a, a huge big brother fan, Lisa. And boy, talk about hubris. There's this guy who just thinks he's all that and uh, has no idea that he has alienated all kinds of people. And I just think he outsmarted himself. He just, you know, he's on oh. his own little world and, you know, and uh, there's a lot of ladies in the house and they kind of resent that he's not listening to them you know, <laughs> and they're right. against him. And I think now what he's shocked about, it, it, he may be correct. I mean, you know, the person who's, you know, uh, backdooring him as a lady and he says, you know, and she's kept her mouth shut and she's, uh, you know, quietly, you know, snuck up on him. But, you know, in his own mind, he was shocked because he was like, I think I'm the smartest guy in this this room. And he, but, and that could be true. I'm not saying it's not true, but he outsmarted himself. You know, the reason he's going oh is because of, uh, of himself, right? So most oh of the time, trust God. your first judgment. For municipal transactions, data captured made available to the marketplace is done by which of the following? I, I wouldn't worry yeah. about this one, to be honest with you. I would worry about uh, Emma. You know what Emma is about? Emma is about uh, municipal bonds. You know, maybe, maybe Trace. But this one I wouldn't worry about is the real-time reporting system. And I just think that's stupid. Okay. All I'm right. A client sends that. a text message that. containing a complaint. So a client sends a text message uh, alleging mishandling of an account. One day later, that client sends you a text message rescinding the complaint. Which of the following would be appropriate action? Thank the client for resending the complaint. And because it was not in writing, no report needs to be made. Um, they sent you a text message. Okay, ignore the incident. Report the complaint to your manager supervisor. Ignore the incident because the complaint was not in writing. 
Well, it was in text, so it was in writing. Uh, that's so, it, right? Right on. They, they so over and over and over again. Regulators have said we don't make any distinction about its written form and whether it was a text or whether it was, you know, old snail mail letter. So you're right on. Yep. Let's see. You're right on. Right on. All right. Well, listen. Uh, I think what we should do here, because, you know, it would take us another hour or so, and we're going to do that. I know, Lisa, you've been kind enough to tell uh, myself uh, that you are going to do a complete final, and you're going to let the uh, test takers ride, take a free ride with you on that one as well. But I think we should end it here at the 50 questions and call it Lisa's Nifty 50, right? You did 50 ah, like performance opportunities. Uh, I, as your tutor, am very, very pleased with your performance. Uh, there's been a huge uh, improvement in uh, knowledge base. There's been a huge improvement in just being able to read a question and deal with the the stuff that is meaningful or not. So you know you don't you don't get uh, A, B, or C, D. But if I was going to give you a grade for today's performance, it would certainly be an A. And if we can continue just to kind of get a little better, a little better, uh, I think we're going to be in pretty good shape. So we'll look at that, doing that complete practice final next week. And uh, like okay. I say, very, very pleased. Whatever you're doing on your own, uh, rinse and repeat, just keep doing that. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording uh, in the comments section. You can thank Lisa for being generous enough uh, to share her tutoring situ uh, situation uh, with you in doing these questions and we're going to be doing a practice exam next week sometime as well so let's stop the recording stop the share all right so uh what do you think about today's performance i'm very pleased uh i'm kind of disappointed uh in myself a little bit because i Why? feel like i shouldn't well, I mean, kind of like, you know, you said, those are some things that I should just know and have, I mean, with as much as I feel like I've been studying. Um, oh, well, Jay, I uh, certainly, you listen, you got to trust me and not yourself on that. I mean, I don't, I don't blow smoke. If I really thought you had some kind of problem, I thought there were a couple of questions, just the opposite. You had way more questions where you uh, were lucid and you attacked them correctly whether it was aim and shoot questions that you got correct. There was a one where I thought there was a, uh -huh, a moment of enlightenment where you, you kind of said, oh man, I think I finally just got that one. So I, uh, like I say, just make sure um, that you give yourself credit for that. I mean, I really, I mean, I, I told you, I don't, you know, we're going to continue to work, uh, but you only had a couple of questions where uh, I said, okay, that was a bad miss. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think was it you. I apologize. If it wasn't you. Well, we had I was doing a, a tutoring session with a bunch of QIDs. Was that us? I don't that was know. Us. Yep. Oh, and, uh, you know, I think you went on. A, was that you that we went on a, a about like 20 of these things and not one of them was a an easy question? It was yeah. that you. So I apologize. I got so, so much stuff going on. I can't keep track of people. Uh, but same thing there. What I love is this was more of a balance. Right. And you did, you did, you got a balance of easy and difficult questions. And you were able to attack those easy ones uh, for the most part. You, you know, you knew, knew what the answer was. I do wish, and again, this is just the nature of, uh, of what we do. I do wish even you were going to miss, you'd do it a little quicker. You know, that's just me. Right. So, so yeah, that, but by the way, that comes with missing. You got to accept that missing questions is part of the process. So, you know, you can't beat yourself up. If, you know, like you were doing that two or three and remember, I kind of said, you know, listen, we can't be taking 30 minutes to decide between two and three and two and four. And then you got to give yourself permission. Like I said, you can't beat yourself up. I would have been happy even if you would have missed that because, you know, that you, we're not getting a hundred. We just got to allocate our, 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 our brain fuel accordingly. Right. So right. that, that was an example where, uh, you know, and by the way, you should trust your judgment. So in that case, Almost always when you had your your first inclination, just proof that that's your best answer, right? Almost yep. every time you said, well, I think I'm taking two and three. And boom, that's the right answer. And so we just and, and I wish I could give myself that much confidence. I think because I have failed the exam twice, I think I'm, you know, I feel like maybe I'm not... Um, 
not feeling confident like I should, even though I know I have studied so much. <laughs> Listen, it shows. So um, what was your second score? It was a 60 plus, wasn't it? You were below 60? No. Well, okay. I, well, I don't listen. I we want to continue working, but I would have based on your performance today. I would have never guessed that you got below sixty. But you know, who knows oh, how yeah. much base, how much more base you have now, versus how much base knowledge you had then. So you know, yeah, that could be the enormous amount of work you're putting in, which I I get right because I know you told me it's it's real if you don't get this it, thing done. So. It is. It, so it, happy it, level. There's real. a happy level of anxiety. I don't know what that happy level is where it becomes a motivational thing, right? And then there's that that anxiety that freezes you, like that warrant question. You know, and I was teasing you, but you, you can't get frozen. You got to say, you know, I oh my God, there's that big ass word problem. You got to you gotta say, no, uh, let me just, you know, let me read it once. I'm going to figure out some way I'm going to try and come up with an answer. And then that's what yeah. you want to practice is how am I going to come up with an answer? And uh and I think we keep working. And I think, uh, like I said, I think you're going to be okay. So take my word for it that uh, today was an excellent, excellent uh, session for you to demonstrate your prowess, not lack of prowess, prowess, prowess you have. Are we going to get more prowess? Mm -hmm. We are. And that just comes yeah. from working and doing more practice questions. Uh, and same thing on those QIDs. So uh, I thought, you know, I'm glad that we did the full final this way, because I think in that last session, we were focusing on a lot of the most difficult things. Nothing wrong with that, but you're not going to get 125 of the most difficult series seven questions. You're going to get a, as I said, you're going to get a balance of easy and difficult. And so, you know, yeah. that's why I like what we did today. So, okay. When's our next session? Yeah. Next some point time. When am I seeing you next? Um, I'm gonna, when I'm gonna look at your, I'm gonna try and book some time. So whatever day works for you, because I yeah, same thing. We went over it today. I'm more than happy to comp whatever overtime we do when we're doing questions together. So, but if we're going to do a full one, as you can just see, it took us uh, almost two hours to get through, you know, 50 questions. So uh, just know that when you book that 90 minutes, it's going to be more like probably three hours. And maybe what we'll do is give ourselves permission to take a little break. We'll time ourselves. Make sure we're in the time constraint of the test itself, because on the real test, if you need to take a break, I also thought that I thought a couple there towards the end, I think you were you were getting more tired than it was that you didn't know the question. So, you know, on the real yeah. test, too, you can say, hey, I want to take a, a mental trip to Tahiti here for a minute, take a little break, you know, come back and, uh, you know, re refresh, reset and, uh, you know, finish up that that second part. So. Uh, so I'll, I'll be looking forward to that. I won't help you as much on the next one. I won't hint as much as I did today. What I mean by that is because we really want to get a true score. So we want to know, you know, what your score is without Dean's help. So, uh, you know, I, I'll yeah. still help you. I'll still help you and do what we did and talk about things, but I'll wait till you give me your answer. And then once you give me your answer, then I go, eh, or I go ding, 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 ding. I'm joking, but we'll, uh, Okay. Then talk about it. that way we'll have a true score we'll know because i know how important that is to you in terms of confidence to know that you have scores that reflect that you will pass right so that's yeah. what we need to get is those kind of marks where we don't have to take you know dean's word for it we got a score that reflects lisa can pass the test that's what we want yeah yeah that's what i that's that will give me some confidence yeah. if i can you know get get that going and yeah. feel like it yeah all right uh a long ass day for me and i'm done so i am looking forward to taking a siesta so uh and, yeah uh, go Thank say you. hi to mom and uh i'll see you when i see you next you know where to find me you don't need a book tutor you need to check in on zoom and you're having a rough time or you got a qid just send it my way and we don't need a book tutor for that we'll make sure we we uh, get it get you the help you need okay Okay, but I yeah. will book for next week the yeah. um, full exam and then also the one for the options. Oh, I yeah, yeah, really I forgot. Feel... You want to do this. So that means we need two sessions. So um, uh, book for the options, just book an hour. It might take us more than an hour to do Brian's option questions, uh, but book an hour okay. for that. And then, you know, again, I'll, I'll copy the difference. And then the uh, practice exam, book an hour and a half, and then just know that's going to be more like three hours. Okay. Okay. And then okay. when's your test date again? All right. 
Um, I'm, I'm studying it for the seventh. I just looked on FINRA today. So, and they've opened my, my thing. So I'm studying it for the seventh. I like it. I like it. So that's what I'm thinking. That's what a week from a week, a little over a week from now or two weeks from now. Like um, I think it's, I think it's, I have this weekend and I have next. Yeah. Weekend, I think we have. Weekend. Yeah. So just, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Just working your ass off. I mean, uh, that's what it takes. I mean, you're a grinder, so I appreciate that as a, as your tutor that you're working, because right? you know, yeah, you can do the work for you. You got to do the work. So, and you're certainly doing that's, the work. That's it. So, all right, I'll see you next week. If you need me before then, let me know. Okay, thank you okay. so much. Good job, Lisa. Good okay. job. Like I said, I'm not kissing your ass. Thank that was you. A good job. All right, bye bye. Thank you.